Hello, Frenzy. My name is Kate Shark, and welcome back to Rain Swept. Now, uh, we found out that Johnny's a bit of a peeping Tom, uh, taking pictures of everything. So he's been placed under arrest. Not quite sure why, um, but we were going to go ahead and continue on with his investigation or his interrogation. Well, why'd you have a room full of their pictures, Johnny? What were you planning? I, I wasn't planning anything. Don't lie. Oh, did what? I. We should talk. We should talk. Just not right now, Blunt. There is no time. Um. Where were you that night? I was home. I don't wanna. Why'd you do it? I answer me. How did you get the gun, Johnny? Does someone ask you to kill them? Well. Detective, I need to discuss something right now. I need to show you something important. What? Does it have to be now? Yes, now. It has to do with this case. It can't wait. Fine, but make it quick. Okay, what is it? We don't have much time. I can't let another sus sp suspect slip through my fingers. Nothing, Detective. You just need to calm down. What's gotten into you? You're just screaming at him and scaring him. You're not even letting him speak. You need to go easy. You know, he's just a kid. In any case... We have no solid evidence that was him. What the hell is going on here? Ugh, this guy again. Say nothing. Who gave you the authority to use this room and arrest the citizens of this town? Uh, let me question Johnny. He murdered them. Look who's jumping to conclusions now. Officer Blunt, I am disappointed in you supporting such nonsense. Now go on and release Johnny. No, he's a suspect. Do not say a word, detective. This is out of your jurisdiction. You're supposed to leave town this morning. If Johnny is the murderer, he's done it. I don't think so. I think he knows more than he's let on, but he had a room full of their pictures. Is there anyone left in this town you haven't blamed yet? Yesterday, you were after Father Smith. Half of this town is involved, according to you. You even managed to burn down a room in our hotel. Who are you going to question next? Me? What are you really trying to do here, detective? Have you been looking at this case objectively, or do you need to catch someone? Anyone at all costs, even if they're innocent. You're obsessed with the thought of finding someone that's responsible, even if you have to make it all up. There's no case here, detective. It was the, it was murder-suicide. I won't let you pull my town into your mess, whatever your motivations may be. But then what's the hurry to close the case, just because of the festival? Why the hurry to arrest Johnny? Has your error against blinded you? Did you even bother looking for evidence before arresting Johnny? Look at this. Mrs. Brown just came over to the station with it. Can you see what it is? It's a photograph. Uh, this is one of the photos in his room full of pictures. One that she conveniently missed. Fifteen. That's... Oh. Can, what can you see in the picture? Uh... I... That's not Chris and Diane's house. I don't know. I don't know what this is. You talk so much you don't know shit. That's Johnny's house. Look at the time it was taken. That's when Mr. Willis heard the gunshot. Johnny lives about ten minutes away from Chris and Diane's house. I don't understand. How could he have been over at Chris's place and be home at the same time to click this picture, huh? How could he have clicked this picture of his own home at the same time as the shootings? I don't know. Exactly. Well, someone else could have clicked it, so... You don't know what you're doing, detective. Finally, you admit it. You wasted everyone's time and energy. You should be happy. I'm just letting you walk after all you've done. Just get out of this town now. Just go. I mean, it just shows that a picture was taken. It doesn't show that he took it, to be fair. To be fair. Look how pretty that is. I love this, the graphics. Oh, I must have gotten another room. I see they're giving you a new room. It's only temporary. It's just so they could dump my bag somewhere for the day. I'm not staying. Can't, actually. Yeah, that's a pity. Jack's brought your car. It's been fixed. It's good. I'm here with Officer Blunt. She's waiting outside. Oh, okay. I'll just be a minute. No, it's not that. She's worried. I don't know what you want me to say or do, Doc. Talk to her. What about? 
Whatever you've been carrying around with you all these days, tell her, please. It'll do you good to talk about it to a friend. And I think you see her as a friend, right? Yeah, you could say that. Well, great then. And have a good drive back home. I hope we can meet again under different circumstances, hopefully. Thanks, Doc. You take care, too. Okie dokie. Oh, it's so pretty. I guess I should go talk to her. Oh, okay. I was about to say, how do I get down there? Hey, Michael. So you're really leaving, huh? What choice do I have? It's over. So what will you do when you go back? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it. Oh. I really thought we were going to figure this all out. Even if it is murder-suicide. I wish we had some proof. Or some answers. I feel like I've come to know them over the past few days, and I know it was going to sour towards the end, but... To kill themselves, I wonder what really pushed them to do it. Do you think they did it? No, I don't. I don't want to, at least. I don't either. You know, my dad, he... Hmm? Never really told you about him, did I? When I was 10, he killed himself. Gunshot to the head. I'm sorry, Amy. I was there when it happened. Ran down to see where the loud bang came from. And there he was, sat in his favorite chair with a gun in his hand, and... Mother tried explaining it the best she could. He was sad, she said. I could barely make sense of it at the time. Why was he unhappy? Wasn't our family enough? Did I not make him happy? Could I have done something to change it? But of course, I was 10. What could I have done? I tried figuring out what led us, what led to his depression. For months I went over his last few days with us. I don't remember much, but I recall he changed in some ways during the last couple of days. I kind of understand it then, but I just felt off. He didn't feel like the dad I knew, even though he acted like it. Detective, the thing is, I don't know if you've always been this way. I don't think you have. I think he used to be different. The way you are, or have become, you remind me so much of him. You remind me of the way he changed during his last days. It feels the same. I was only 10 then, and I was helpless. But I'm older now, and I understand people. And I'm a police officer, for God's sake. I can't, can't let that happen again. I won't let it. Amy, I, what's wrong, Michael, please, I, I need to know what's making you suffer this way. What what happened to Abigail, Michael? Of the little fuzz around is. Let's tell her. Okay. Abigail was my wife. God, it's hard to talk about this to finally talk to someone. We met when we were at university. I'd sit in the library every day after classes, studying up on different subjects, buried in books. Oh, I'm sorry. Ugh. Um, she sat on the same table as me once, but didn't say anything. I didn't either. I didn't really know her well. We saw each other in the hallways, shared a class or two. Despite that, she stood out to me. She looked different from the rest. Like a sensible, balanced, mature person, you know? <laughs> That can be rare sometimes. That went on for a couple of weeks. She never said anything, nor did I. We just share a table. But I become comfortable in her presence. That was rare too. One day I very uncharacteristically caught myself looking at her. So did she. Hi. Uh, hello. You're a slow reader. Uh, what? You've been reading that book for weeks now. It's a dense subject and well, yeah, actually, I am a slow reader. Why don't you take the book home with you? I like the atmosphere here. Mm, I know what you mean. Me too. Do you want to take a break? Go somewhere? She was confident, understanding, and really, really patient. I love that. We quickly became inseparable, often spending hours together doing our own thing without saying a word to each other. We didn't need to talk, plan, or do much to have fun together. Being around each other was enough. Her company was meditative. Med meditative? Being with her gave me the same feeling of peace and calm that she gave me. 
Oh, how cute. Obviously, a couple years after graduation, we were married. Nothing spectacular out of the ordinary happened leading up to our marriage, just the way we were. But that was bliss for us. We were a bedrock, a foundation for each other. She meant everything to me. Everything. Which is why I can't come to terms with what I've done. This year, on the 7th of April, we were about to go out for dinner. We've been married two years at the time. God. Hey, Michael, you ready to go? Yeah. Wait, hold on, I think I forgot something. I'll be right back. The phone rang. I should have never answered it. Uh, where's the phone? Oh, there it is. Hello. Boss, sorry to call you at home. What's up? We just received a call from an informant. Apparently he has info that he wants to share about Alex. Where is he? He's near the intersection on the 22nd to 9th Avenue. You're not going to go see him right now, are you, boss? I'm heading that way anyway. A couple of questions won't take any time. How about tomorrow? He could be gone by tomorrow, Warren. We could change his he could change his mind. Alex could find out and try to silence him. It's just an informant. We have our first lead of months. Let's not mess it up. All right, I'll join you ASAP. Wait for me. Hurry up. Alex was a suspect in a major case and I've been trying to pin down for months. I was convinced he was the key in unlocking the case, but my boss felt I was getting obsessed and tunnel visioned. He wanted me to give up on it and pursue other leads. Alex kept skipping away like a rat. After months of silence, he, here was a chance to make a breakthrough at last. You ready to go? I'll just be a minute, all right? Why now? Where are you going? Something already just come up. I'll be back in a minute. Uh oh. Uh, he'd been told to wait outside the cafe near the intersection of. Damn it. I remember the color of the sky that evening a pale peach. Uh, stop it! <laughs> the rush in the streets, the traffic, the sounds, the lights. The whole place was so alive, vibrant. Part of me wanted to just drop this whole thing. Uh, stop! <laughs> Uh, it goes too fast. Okay, so here's the cafe, right? The smell of coffee, the laughter, and the voices of people drifting from the cafe. Oh, now you're going. Maybe I was hitting the wrong button. Standing there watching those people in there, happy, cozy, and warm, I realized I wanted that, not this. A speeding car broke me out of my daydream. I must have been hitting the button. Oh. Seconds later, I heard gunshots. Oh, shit. I ran back to my car as fast as I could. I couldn't be. It couldn't be. Of course not. Oh, no. Why did I bring her along, though? No, I was just freaking out. Everything would be fine. Getting back... Oh, oh shit. Um, million years. Remember looking at the sky? It still looked the same. Oh, no. Seeing Abigail dead, my world fell apart. There was no reason for me to carry on. Alex had been in the area. He knew of me. He knew I was after him. He knew the car I drove. I had been careless, irresponsible, and she paid the price. I don't know if he thought I was in the car or just wanted to spite me. He just drove past my car and opened fire. But one thought stopped me from doing anything to myself. Find him. Make him pay. That was the only thing that kept me alive at that moment. I was back at work the very next day. I didn't dare allow myself the time to think about it. Yikes. The informant had run away. I could have started looking for Alex again, but that I would have started looking for Alex again, but that gave me purpose. I didn't get the chance to do that though. They found Alex the next day dead. He was killed in a shooting that broke out when a deal went bad. A meaningless death in a back alley, fit for scum like him. Oof. But why now? Why not a day before? Why did he have to take Abigail away? Just one day before that. Just one day. And I took her there. I made it happen. I took her to the wrong place at the wrong time. I just lost that purpose too, but I carried on for some reason, aimlessly. I kept coming to work every day. Chief asked me to take a few days off, but work was the only thing keeping me sane or sedated. 
I stopped going home and staying at a motel. I didn't want to see that house again without her. I put myself completely into my work during the day and at night I'd be so tired that I'd go to sleep right after work. I eventually stabilized. I got into a rhythm of living without thinking of her, of anything. I managed to shed away all the thoughts and memories of her. It was the only way I could live. It slowly developed into a new life, an almost normal life. Work was all that mattered. Not thinking about her became second nature. And I hadn't thought about her at all for months until I was sent here. There were so many moments, small, beautiful, that I buried inside and tried to forget because it hurts so much to think of how good it was. It's scary to move on. Every day that goes by moves me further away from the last time that I saw her. She keeps becoming a part of the past with every passing second. By the time I've forgotten so much that's happened, I can only remember a few big moments. The smaller moments have dissolved around them. They're like small islands, archipelagos, you know? A few memories still sinking out in the sea. But every day the numbers grow lesser and lesser and the islands become smaller, disappear one by one. I'm scared of that. Soon it'll be one year since it happened, then two, then ten. I'll move on and she'll become unimportant in my life. How is that right? It'd be comfortable, convenient to move on, to feel better. But do I deserve that? How can I be happy again after my actions killed her? She wasn't just my wife, you know? It isn't just my loss. She was her own person with her own life, dreams, ambitions, and I took all that away from her. Michael, she knows you loved her. It wasn't intentional. And she won't become unimportant to you. That will never happen. Believe me, that voice telling you that it was your fault, that you could have done something, you need to stop listening to it. She wouldn't want you to blame yourself, would she? Even then, I just miss her so damn much. I feel like I can't risk being happy anymore. I don't want to see what follows when you lose something good. The bad times don't invalidate the good, Michael. They're both real. <sighs> I know what you mean. But I just can't bring myself to live that, to live without a burden. You're right, you know. I wasn't always this way. I used to be different. I was never this impulsive, never made decisions without thinking things through and considering every possibility. The way I am these days, that isn't me. It's only since I've come here. I feel I have no self-control. I feel I need to find someone responsible to make someone pay anyone. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm so yawning. <clears throat> I feel like I could just explode at any moment and kill someone. Someone responsible just, just because I couldn't. Of course. What? The rain, the rain. Did it rain? Rain that night, Amy? Did it? I, I don't remember. I think. Try to remember. I think so. I think it did. Of course. There were no fingerprints on the gun. It was too cold. What? Oh no, I've made a mistake. I shouldn't have... Wait, what's going on, Michael? What did you do? I hope we're not too late. We need to go now. And that seems like a good place as any to leave off this episode. So, seems like a good place as any to leave a cliffhanger there for you guys. So, I'm going to do that. Um, so thank you all so much for watching this episode. Be sure to chomp down on that like button if you did like it. Leave a comment down below with any other game suggestions or video ideas that you'd like to see from me. Share this channel with your friends and subscribe to the channel to see other videos that I've done. I will see you all for the next one, hopefully for the conclusion.